this sidetracks and still trying to no, uh, finish what email, you need to finish got an email back from um, that lady at, at that provider and they're going to help her looking into a fellowship program so she can now look at two schools because of course it's I'm going to sell her on the school I went to but now she has options and so that takes the pressure off a little bit of her application process for her first choice so that's it's awesome. kind of funny how this study and I meet all these people in the world of ABA and I'm able to Mm -hmm. or before even taken so that's pretty cool that's it is i i honestly cool. didn't realize how big the community is and it's it's awesome all right i'm gonna take my video off because i'm gonna to be honest i'm probably gonna eat because we're okay. ready but uh whenever you're ready go ahead and take it okay so who's gonna um handle the chat with maybe Widna can Widna, do you mind um covering the chat She there? She's here. Oh yeah, she is. Okay. Can quiet. you hear me? A little bit. Okay. Um, so if Vitna is not available, I can do that. Yeah, that would be great if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. You can hear me properly? Yeah. Like, this is the first time I'm using the headset, so. <laughs> oh wow, headsets on Trudy? Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we're doing chapter 12, negative reinforcement. So I just want to first thank Patrick for putting all um, his hard work and dedication into most of these slides. Um, so thank you again for that, because it would have took me a lot longer. So first we have what negative reinforcement is, um, the occurrence of response that produces the removal, termination, reduction, postponement, or avoidance of a stimulus, which leads to an increase in the future occurrence of that response. Negative reinforcement adds something after the behavior occurs to escape or avoid something unpleasant with an increase in that behavior in the future. So um, I kind of made some visuals because I'm a visual learner and I know it's not easy to understand Cooper sometimes. So basically we have a headache, um, we take an aspirin and then the headache goes away. So we're, we're removing that unwanted stimulus and the future behavior of taking aspirin in the future increases. So um, our full description of negative reinforcement consists of four components. Um, our first one is the establishing operation for the behavior that is maintained by negative reinforcement is the antecedent of event in which, in whose presence escapes, um, escape is reinforcing, so the termination of that event. Then we have our SD. So our SD is another antecedent event in whose um, presence the response is more likely to be reinforced. Then we have our response, the act that produces reinforcement. And then last, we have the termination of the events that served as the EO. So as you could see in the picture, our establishing operation is the loud construction noise outside. Then we have um, our SD, where we would have, say, a roommate nearby. Then we would ask the roommate to close the window and then the construction noise is removed. So the effects of the frequency of similar responses under similar conditions increase in the future. So does everybody understand that? If you have any questions, feel free to just speak up. Marsha, these visuals are amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gotta love Google. <laughs> All right, so we have positive versus um, negative reinforcement. So positive and negative reinforcement have a so similar effect on behavior. They both produce an increase of responding. They are different due to the stimulus change that follows the behavior. So first we have our negative reinforcement. We have our establishing operation, a child missed lunch at school. Then our SD is mom is present when the child gets home. Then the response, the child asks mom to make a sandwich. And then we have that um, mom makes sandwich and child consumes. So that's our positive reinforcement, I'm sorry. And the effect of the frequency of similar uh, responses under similar conditions increase in the future. So the child is missing the lunch and then by asking and getting that sandwich, 
we're reinforcing that child and that behavior um, of asking increases. And then we have our negative reinforcement. So um, if rain starts to fall and there's a, and then our SD would be the new stand nearby, our response would be to buy an umbrella and use it as a cover. And then the rain diminishes from our face. So that would be removing that rain for our future behavior to increase in the future. A quick thing, Masha, quick thing if I can add to this. Of course. Yeah, um, so it, it's both. Uh, the effects are uh, might increase and it can also be maintained. Mm -hmm. So there are there are certain more questions which do not say anything about increase, but you know some behavior stay as it is. So if okay. it is even if it's maintained, it is still positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement, depending gotcha. on whatever the question. Is. I can't okay. think of increasing too, but yeah, yeah, maintained That's or a good point. Maintained. yeah, yeah. It's a great point. Mm -hmm. I'm writing that one down for practice. <laughs> All right, so negative reinforcement versus punishment. Negative reinforcement is sometimes confused with punishment. Um, the late term for pun uh, positive reinforcement is rewards. People mistakenly consider negative reinforcement as the technical term for the opposite of reinforcement, which is punishment. Positive and negative do not refer to good and or bad, but the type of change that follows the behavior, which is the consequence. The second source of confusion comes from the fact that the stimuli involved in both negative reinforcement and punishment are by definition aversive, which are unpleasant things. So I found this, I thought it was really cool. It kind of um, breaks, breaks it up for you to explain um, reinforcement and punishment. And I'll put this slide up on, um, on theory as well. So if anybody wants to use this as a study tool. Okay, so next we have escape contingency. Um, escape contingency is negative reinforcement involves an escape contingency, which is a response that terminates an ongoing stimuli. Um, so how I remember this is um, for the escape is we're already in the situation. So the example I gave, a student drops to the floor screaming when given a worksheet, the student escapes having to do his work, the behavior of screaming increases. And then as you can see another example, we have rain falling on your head as you walk down the sidewalk, the SD um, friend says, do you have an umbrella? Response, put the umbrella, put up the umbrella, and then you escape the rain from falling on your head and putting up umbrella more likely in the future when it's raining and um, friend asks for umbrella. Then we have um, avoidance contingencies, which is most behavior, um, most behavior maintained by negative reinforcement is characterized by avoidance contingency in which a response prevents or postpones the presentation of a stimuli. So the hint here that I put in was prior to entering the situation. So escape is that you're already in it trying to get out and avoidance is um, before you get into the situation, you want to avoid it. So an example I use, the student is working, uh, walking past his classroom and sees his teacher giving out worksheets. He then decides to keep walking down the hallway instead of going into his classroom. He avoids having to complete his work. The behavior of walking past his classroom to escape work increases. And then I saw this little image, which I thought was perfect for this situation. So work and bills are in one direction and it's like, hey, I only wanted to grow up so I could eat pizza whenever I want. So he's running away from all that adulting. <laughs> okay, so the avoidance contingency, we got um, the discriminated avoidance. Responding in the presence of a signal prevents stimulus presentation. Um, the hint here that I always look for is that for the discriminated avoidance, we have the SD present. An example, I look outside and I see that it is snowing. So you're seeing that it's snowing. You grab your snow boots to avoid getting, getting your feet soaked. So you can discriminate on that. Your free operant is responding at any time, prevents stimulus presentation. 
The avoidance behavior is free to occur at any time. So there's no SD present. Um, the example here, I look outside and it is cloudy. I am not sure if it will rain, but I grab my raincoat anyway, just in case. So we have some characteristics of negative reinforcement. Responses acquired and maintained by negative reinforcement are aversive stimulation produces a variety of responses, including respondent behavior. Um, an example is reflexive actions. Then we have presentation of aversive stimulus serves as an establishing operation for escape and occasions behavior that has produced escape in the past. Responses that terminate the stimulation will be strengthened. Producing adaptive behavior is defined as interacting effectively within the environment and important um, development of academic skills, but also disruptive or dangerous behaviors. Um, we have events that serve as negative reinforcers. So stimulus described as a negative reinforcer refers to its removal because as noted previously, the same stimulus serves as an establishing operation when presented prior to behavior and as punishment when presented following behavior. And then we have a couple more. Um, we have our learning history. Negative reinforces influence behavior because we have the inherited capacity to respond to them. The efforts have been established through a history of learning. Um, unconditioned negative reinforcers are the stimuli whose removal strengthens behavior in the absence of prior learning. So an example is typically noxious events such as shock, loud noise, intense light, extremely high or low temperatures, or strong pressure against the body. Uh, then we have conditioned negative reinforcers, previously neutral events that acquire the effects through pairing with an existing negative reinforcer. The source of negative reinforcement, we have social negative reinforcement, um, like asking your wife to turn down the television when it is loud, so it'll be more um, socially mediated. We have automatic negative reinforcement, turning the volume down to the television yourself. And then um, identifying the contents of negative reinforcement. So next we have extinction of behavior maintained by negative reinforcement. Extinction involves both an operation and an effect. So we have terminating, termination of reinforcement and the reduction in responding. Application of extinction involves factors, including its direct and indirect effects, some of which may be undesirable, and we have historical influences that may facilitate or impede its outcome. So acquisitions and maintenance of problem behavior, just keep in mind um, presentation of task demands may function as an establishing operation for escape behavior due to some aversive features of the work required. So this happens to me a lot. I work with early childhood and the teachers just want that kid out of the class when they're screaming and they don't realize that you're actually reinforcing that behavior because the child ended up screaming a lot to get out of the classroom and it worked. Um, so initial forms may include lack of engagement or mild forms of disruption. We have escape from task demands is a common source of negative reinforcement for property destruction, aggression, and even self-injurious behaviors. So that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions? Can I, can I add something? Of course. You can. On, that, on that part at the end, I always notice special education that like the idea behind school suspension and pulling a kid out of the classroom is based on really negative punishment mm -hmm. in theory. You know, we remove in someone theory, they wanted yeah. to be around to decrease those behaviors, but in turn, it really mm -hmm. turns into a negative reinforcement cycle also. You're Absolutely. taking away something they didn't want maybe in the first place, mm -hmm. and the behavior will increase. That's why we have a spike or an increase in maintaining I start talking about maintaining word in there maintain that behavior after after such exactly and in theory that is you know like i know when you're like in middle school they give you detention and you have to stay in school longer in that detention but like in the preschool setting they were more pulling the kids in the middle of the day so for them it was more reinforcing but some kids just don't want to be in class and they don't care so it's like 
you know, in theory, it's really supposed to be punishment, um, but it doesn't end up happening that way. <laughs> from my experience at least. And I'm sure you've seen this, Patrick, you're in early childhood too. <laughs> so is there anything that anybody wants to add? Um, I put together a few questions just to kind of test your knowledge. Let's see. Wait, uh, um, Widna, are you there? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but um, yeah, so you can send your answers to me. That's fine. Just privately send your answers to me so there isn't any reactivity. So first question, negative reinforcement requires how many contingencies? A, three-term contingency, B, two-term contingency, C, four term contingency or D, no contingency involved? All right, I'll give it about 10 more seconds. All right, so the answer here is C, it's our four term um, contingency. We have that establishing operation, then we have that SD, then we have that behavior, and then we have that increase in future, um, increase or maintaining in um, future behavior. Great job, guys. All right, question two. What does positive reinforcement and negative- uh, Sorry, can I ask a question? I'm so sorry. The question yeah. that you just, you just said it's for short-term contingency? Yeah, so um, if you look, let me pull up the slide real quick. So our full um, description, what how negative reinforcement works, we have that establishing operation. So a lot of people get it confused because they only see the SD as the antecedent, but the EO actually is also an antecedent event, and that comes before the SD. So it's our four term. Does that make sense? Yes, Patrick. According to Cooper, yes. that's how. Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. Okay, so. no problem. Okay, our next question. What does positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement have in common? A, they are the opposite. B, both decrease behavior. C, both increase behavior or both are important. Pick the best answer. I'll give it about five more seconds. Okay, and the answer here is that they both increase behaviors because we have that reinforcement in there. Okay, negative reinforcement involves a attention condition, B escape contingency, C automatic contingency, or negative or D negative does not involve contingency reinforcers. Skip B. I want to go to B also. B. Okay, so our answer here is B, it's our escape contingency. Negative reinforcement involves the escape contingency. 
Question four in a functional analysis, escape from demands is A, negative reinforcement, B, positive reinforcement, C, automatic reinforcement, or D, sensory reinforcement. All right, we'll give it about five more seconds. All right, great job, everyone. The answer is a negative reinforcement. And this is our last question. Sally is afraid of dogs. Her mom asked her to go for a walk at 5 p.m., but Sally saw her neighbor outside with the dog. Sally tells her mom to walk the opposite direction towards the park. What avoidance contingency is being described? A, free operant avoidance, B, discriminative avoidance, C, free operant escape, or D, discriminative escape? I'll give it a couple more seconds. Judy, a smiley face looks like D. <laughs> and the correct answer here is B, discriminative avoidance. Does anybody want to explain why that's the answer? Because you have an SD. And what's our SD? Yes, see, it's known that it's at 5 p.m. and you tell them it's at 5 p.m. Like you gave them the SD. Well, the SD is seeing the neighbor outside with the dog. So the dog outside is your SD. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Um, what's the uh, reasoning behind no contingencies for the escape? Whitna, you want to take that one? Yes. What was the question again? What's the reason that there are not any contingencies for the escape conditions? So the escape condi condition, well, you have the discriminated um, contingency and then you have the free the avoidance contingency. The avoidance will be part of the escape contingency because you, like, you, you don't know the SD is present or not. So you avoid yourself from that. So avoidance and, contingency is avoiding the situation. Yeah. And C and D is not even a thing. It's just right. So that's, to throw you so off. that's why I was saying, obviously, it's not a thing. But I guess I'm asking, like, in Cooperland, why is it not a thing? And it's only for avoidance and not escape. Well, let me think about that first. Yeah, because yeah, I'm, because I'm, even with the free operant, you could technically no, I guess you would need an SD for a free operant mm -hmm. escape. Right. But the discriminative escape, it doesn't make sense why there isn't one of those mm -hmm. and why it's only avoidance and not escape included. Because mm -hmm. I can see this being on the exam just like this for that reason. I always think of escape and avoidance like escape is the first time. The first time you saw the dog, you ran escape. You knew you didn't like it, um, you're, it was aversive, you had to get away from it. Avoidance is like now you have a history. You see that dog, you know in the past what that dog's capable of, so now you have the SD set up, you see that dog and the walker, and now you are going to avoid it at all costs. Um, it's kind of like at work, you have a coworker that you, you work for the first time, and they're unpleasant to work with, and the first time, they start, yeah, whatever. You got away quickly. You escaped. Now we see them. They're now in SD, and we go out of our way to avoid them. We now have avoidance. It's like a procedure. Like, first, you have to have that escape first. And now that you know about the escape, now you're avoiding that situation because of that history. So it, it starts like with the escape first because avoiding something that you don't know that you have not had mm -hmm. a negative experience with would it not be avoidance. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right. And it would be escape alone. It wouldn't be like a free operant or discriminative because you're escaping something that you haven't experienced yet. So the free operant and discriminative comes in the avoidance part because you're already you know, know what the situation, you know, has been prior through experience. So now you're going to avoid it and you can choose to avoid it by discriminating and avoiding it. Or you can be like, I don't care. You're free to choose um, whether you want to avoid it or not. Okay. That it makes sense. You probably use that for the contingencies versus escape just because like you said the learning history uh -huh. and you can create a treatment plan off a of learning history whereas the escape does sound more like you said um first time situational type deal so what is the answer for this question so the answer for this question is b discriminative avoidance yeah. because your sd is the dog so just by yeah. sound Seeing that dog, seeing the neighbor and the dog, the SD is the dog. Yes. So because she had experienced it in the past, it's like, oh my gosh, a dog. She's afraid of dogs. So she tells her mom, let's walk the opposite direction because that SD of that dog is present. So you're able to um, discriminate that it's there. So, okay. If you, if you want to turn this to free operant, how is it going to be? So there wouldn't be, the dog wouldn't be there. So if you know that your neighbor is, oh, is coming out at 5 p.m. or whatever, eh, maybe he's going to come outside. I don't know. And then you come outside and the dog is not there. You can choose to go one direction or you can choose to go the other. You're free to choose whether you want to, you know, see that dog or not. But the dog mm -hmm. wouldn't be present because to discriminate, the dog is that SD. Wow. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, God, awesome, God, I'm glad. Awesome. I like the way you're describing. Awesome. <laughs> You're a good teacher. <laughs> well, Patrick did a lot of work and in, um, in a lot of the notes as well. So kind of combined it together. It came out good. Thank you. Awesome. So does anybody else have any questions? Do you want me to go back to any slides? Or, um, because I know some people did come in late and missed some of it. Did you come go back to the beginning? Just joking. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, can you go back to the extinction slide? Sure. Oh, man, my screen's black. So pretty much it's just, you know, making sure that the demands or whatever is maintaining it is not removed. Mm hmm So uh, th these are also um, most of Patrick's notes. If you just want to kind of touch on this, Patrick. Man, I got, I got past me on this one. Huh? I put, because I like was reading it and I want to hear your, your explanation on it. I mean, I just read through the slides too myself here. Um, ex ex I know there's a rogue thing that I saw that showed mm. that explained negative reinforcement versus um, extinction. And it was like reinforcement is withheld during extinction. And then when negative reinforcement, it is um, ah, with withdrawing. Remo yeah, or, withdrawing, removing. So, I mean, we're, we're in extinction process. We're trying to withhold giving the client the reinforcement to maintain that behavior versus negative reinforcement. It's kind of, it just has that, um, Ah, I, I'm speechless all of a sudden. It's kind of also with like extinction, where they're still able to engage in the behavior. We're just not providing them reinforcement for it. Right. Can I so add to it? Go ahead, Can of I course. Add. So, yeah. if you look Give at the re in. reinforcement, oh, sorry. Can you repeat that, Penny? No, I, I hear multiple people talking. So then I think I, I should shut up. No, 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 go ahead. Okay. So if you look at reinforcement, especially if you look at FR1 and you look at extinction, it's the, the outer bookends of a schedule of reinforcement, right? So um, FR1 versus extinction and everything in between are our intermittent schedules of reinforcement. So that's the way you have to look at reinforcement versus extinction where FR1 is every single response context reinforcement, 
extinction, zero responses, contact reinforcement, and everything in between are our intermittent schedules of reinforcement. So some contact reinforcements. So uh -huh. that's the way you have to look at uh, extinction versus reinforcement. In order to differentiate. Yeah, and um, something maintained by negative reinforcement is you're removing an aversive. If you're looking at extinction of negative reinforcement, that is you are not removing that reinforcement. So mm -hmm. in a classroom setting, that would look like um, a child wants to escape the math problem, but when we're going for extinction of negative reinforcement, they don't get to escape, which I don't agree with. I wouldn't do it, but th that's another point. Um, if I'm just looking at the slide, uh, extinction maintained by negative reinforcement, they don't get to escape. Mm -hmm. So they would just like, if we give them a demand and they start screaming, then we're just still letting them sit there and we're just not providing attention to the screaming. And then maybe like five seconds later, we'll present the demand again and just not say anything about the screaming, right? Well, um, if escape is the maintaining variable, generally mm -hmm. it would be you present math, mm -hmm. child screams, you remove math. That's what... Um, escape maintained by negative reinforcement is. Uh -huh. If you're going to present extinction on that, you present math, child screams, you do not take the math away. So that's the extinction part of um, negative reinforcement. They do not get to escape. I personally don't agree. Um, I wouldn't wish anyone to apply these methods because why are they screaming? We don't know. Is it too difficult? Um, do they not understand? Do we need to break it down? Obviously, more is needed than extinction, which is where our DRAs come in, right? We're going to, um, the simplest version mm -hmm. would be teaching them to say, um, can I have a break? But then think further, right? Um, is it too hard? Do we need to make it easier? Um, it's not just think of that DRA, which is, can I have a break? What led to where we are today to begin with, right? Exactly. And would that also um, be considered the DRA, like a functional communication training as well? Just for my clarification. Well, if you're, if you're looking at um, escape maintained behavior, then mm. very often we go for the DRA, which is teach them to ask for a break. Yeah. Okay. When I'm thinking of um escape from math right but it can be other things there, there are other things you can escape from we also do sensory extinction so um johnny doesn't like his scratchy shirt when we do sensory extinction johnny's got to keep his scratchy shirt on that's also um extinction maintained by negative uh -huh. reinforcement that we can apply. I, I wouldn't, but if we're looking at the theory, that's what it would look for. That's look exactly what like. it would look like, yeah. Yeah, so we have yeah, And it definitely can get confusing because if you're not taking that sweater off, you're technically, he's still engaging in that itching behavior because of the sweater, but we're putting that, basically that itching on extinction, right? Well, we're putting the escape on extinction. Escape Johnny's on extinction. still feeling the itching, which is why I would advocate for why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. We all have things we do not want to engage in. Do we always need to do um, extinction for behaviors? For me, that would look like, for example, I don't like spiders. I don't want it near me. I don't want it in the room. Don't bring me a spider. Um, I would go through every negative reinforcement behavior and it wouldn't look pretty it would include screaming it would include smacking if you get closer to me it would include more, more smacking but a very <laughs> appropriate response mm -hmm. i mean do we have to teach me to say uh, can i have a break from the spider no just don't bring me the spider so we have to look beyond um are we just going to teach can i have a break please mm -hmm. right we can also teach Johnny to say, please don't bring me the spider with regards to the math. Why is he screaming? It's got to be too hard. Yeah, exactly. Or something. Yeah, Maybe the eight stinks. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Belinda has also uh, shared one example over here in the chat where uh, she's mentioning her one of the learner would escape oh, yeah. from mm -hmm. another child who was smelling bad. Exactly. Yeah, so um, we, of course, we have to think of DRA, but please think beyond the DRA. Man, my screen keeps on going black. Don't know if it's me. Is it black for you too? No. No. Um, <laughs> it's because you're late. That's your point. I know. <laughs> I thought we started at 8 30. I feel so bad. I was actually sitting around doing nothing till now. Oh, well, oh. thanks for letting me know that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh, no. I was so busy. No, I'm just joking. I, I really <laughs> thought it was 8 30 on Tuesday. I don't know. I'm checking my battery. I'm checking everything. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's a, that's a really. Um, good discussion if you guys are um for it we can maybe come up with a couple free operant avoidance um examples and discriminative avoidance examples because i know they can get very tricky on mocks so just want to make sure everybody has that clarification as well what i always like with escape versus avoidance is with escape you're actually escaping something that's there with it, whereas with avoidance. Well, the discriminated avoidance and the free right, operative avoidance. Mm -hmm. Right, but with avoidance, we're escaping a threat. Mm -hmm. And with a discriminated avoidance, you can see the threat, but it's not there yet. So um, when you're playing football, that, ba that ball coming towards you, I used to do that. I used to, as a young girl at high school, have to engage in playing American football, which I hated because this this thing would come hurling at me. I don't want it. I just really don't. So um, you're avoiding a threat, right? I don't want it in my face. I don't want it smacking against my hands. Mm -hmm. So with discriminated avoid discriminative avoidance, um, you can see the threat. And with free operant, you're just avoiding it altogether. I don't want to be near a football field because just imagine they might make me play football. Yeah. Man, why can't I see you guys? So frustrating. That's an amazing question. Screen. Patrick, go for it. So based on this theory of a discriminated avoidance, my question is, would seeing your ex and avoiding her be a discriminative avoidance? Because you just well, it said it. depends. I if she's it, standing I there. The <laughs> I know I see the threat. And I want to get away from the threat. Yeah. So that's exactly discriminative avoidance. You because that's your SD. You can, you can yeah. see her, whereas it depends whether your wife is with you or not. You're not really <laughs> a threat. I just try to be funny, but right. But with free operant, you're going to avoid every single place that your ex might be in. So you, you have avoid... no idea whether she's there or not. You're yeah. just going to avoid. It's it up all. to you whether you want to go in there and take a chance so real world example we had believe it or not we had a shooting at chili's who does those things i don't know but someone got shot at chili's now everyone's avoiding chili's wouldn't that be free operant avoidance we're avoiding that we just want to avoid it would be more like rule governed behavior no <laughs> might be a little bit of that but i can't believe people will go to chili's and have a duck out drag out and shoot somebody but yeah, well, that happened in Connecticut at Chuck E. Cheese, so. So, Masha, I do like the leap you just made um, to rule governed behavior. So, it would become rule governed behavior when you tell Shruti, don't go to, Shru don't go to Chili's because you'll get shot. And Shruti would be like, what? Yeah, a guy got shot there. It's rule governed because you've made a rule of it. She's never contacted somebody shooting you there. Uh -huh. But now it's become a rule. So, Penny, a question for you, um, or for anybody. Um, so, due to the COVID, people are avoiding going outside or any public malls or something of that sort. So, will that be rule governed or that is pure avoidance? That's a good question because um, I actually made yes. a vignette out of that. So, maybe you that's did. why you're right. And the person that called me on it had a good point. Um, it cannot be discriminated avoidance, they argued, because the consequence is not immediate, right? It's not like um, I see someone coughing and I get COVID you immediately. Get mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So um, I would be the discriminate, discriminated avoidance would be I'm avoiding the cough, um, but the but COVID is not immediate. So I thought, oh yeah, that's a good one. So we have to remember our three term contingency also. Well, the math where the mask word would be rule governed, I would think, and then maybe avoiding yeah because you're you're it's not immediate. So I, no. I would say avoiding certain places, but then you're right. You don't, get yeah, that, so, you don't get sick immediately if you do go there. Yeah, so it is rule governed, right? Because um, COVID is not immediate. Yeah, delayed would now. So would, exactly. an, would an example of free offer and avoidance kind of going with the spider thing, yeah. the fact that I avoid my crawl space underneath my house, oh, my word. The possibility yes. that there's spiders there? Free operant. I'm right with you. I'm not going in that. Don't put me in that crawl space. In fact, just thinking of it makes me just sort of want to just scratch my head and oh my word, I just no. Yeah. Yeah. So if the spider, if you don't see the spider, then I would think that would be free operant. But if the spider was there and you're avoiding it, then it would be discriminated avoidance. So that SD present and not present, I think is very, very important. So when yeah. you're reading these scenarios and you have these options as your 50-50, just go straight to the source. Is there an SD there? Okay, it's discriminated avoidance. Is there not? Free operate. Yeah, so as a family, when, when we came to the US, we came to the US five years ago from Europe, and my husband liked, ah, oh, there's this awesome trail and you can walk through the water and so cool, so cool. And my son and I, my 18, he's 18 now, and we were like, oh, I don't know, I don't like walking through this water because I have no idea what's in this muck. And we really, and he's like, no, it's cool, it's cool. You can walk all the way down the stream. And we, with much resistance, he got us into this water and we're walking around and we both saw a spider like that. My son and I, you have no idea how quickly we got out of that water. <laughs> we're like, no, nope. <laughs> now I can see it. <laughs> now, <laughs> no, oh my word. We had no idea how quickly to get out of the, it was like this big. <laughs> Sitting there on the water. <laughs> so that, I would argue, is probably escape, right? Because there, that spider is right next to yeah, me. And you that were is... in the situation already. Yeah. And you were so already in escape. it, yeah. yeah. So Belinda has a cool question. Um, the rule has to be communicated. No, where where was that about the rule and the communication? She I says don't her think... husband avoids yard work. Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah, so the rule has to be communicated, right? Right. Is what yeah. she's asking. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It has to be. Yep. Very yeah. good. All right. Does anybody have any more questions? Man, this kind of makes me feel like a like a terrible spouse on things. Do I avoid things that she wants me to do now? Probably or? you're a man, so most likely. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a lot of free offer and avoid. Well, there's a bit of generalization for you. <laughs> so, Su Susan had one question. I'll just read. Um, I don't think avoiding chili is rule governed because it is not a spoken rule. Mm hmm. It's so I feel when, it's not necessary so. that it is supposed to be spoken. It can be written as well. It just yeah, because be I written. thought like you see a sign like if there's um, like if they're doing work on the street and you know that you have seen people walking by and they're tripping on this curb because there's like a hole on the street. And then now they put this sign there that says, beware of this hole on the sidewalk and then you decide to walk around it. So that's a nonverbal <laughs> SD, but that's considered rule governed from my understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree with you, Marsha. But it's not nonverbal, right? It's verbal. Well, well, I'm saying really, the yeah. sign yeah. itself. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the construction crew themselves it's are operating discriminative avoidance by refusing to fill the hole in the first place. Mm -hmm. The hole, there's their SD, and they avoid the re avoid the there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, there you go. That makes a lot of sense. I love how our people down here paint the overpasses. I'm like, why do you want to halt traffic for three hours? I mean, who cares if it's a nice shade of green? We're okay. <laughs> but I don't know. 
Well, Susan had a question. Well, not a question, but a comment. If I tell my son, don't go to Chili's because someone got shot there, that will be a rule governed. From my understanding, rule governed is like somebody telling you like you've seen it or heard it from them experiencing it, right, Penny? I actually would have called that a rule, but maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay. a rule. It's really experiencing it, right? Because there are so many religious beliefs and so many superstitions that mm -hmm. get carried, carried forward. You, you might not have contacted, but it's like, you know, carrying from generation to generation in the yeah. family and we just follow it. So it's yeah. not necessary that we have to experience anything. Experience it, okay. It's still a rule. It is still yeah, a, it's yeah. like the reason mm -hmm. why all of us stop at a stop sign, right? Yeah, gotcha. I, I've never experienced... Yeah, the contingent stopping you. No, would be the I just do it. That. It's been made of like, mm -hmm. like Widna said, um, contingency shaped. If you were there for the day of the shooting, right. then that would be yes. more of contingency. Sure. Yeah, yeah. nice yeah. point, Widna. Yeah, Widna's yeah. gonna rock this exam. You guys all are. <laughs> Can't wait to see you guys pass. Well, I postponed mine, so we'll talk about that later. Did. <laughs> so it's, it seems like we're, we're struggling to find a free operant example. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, I said it seems like we're struggling to find a free operant example. The examples we've said so far happen to be rule no, governed. We've we've said we've said quite a few, right? Uh, Patrick's avoiding everything um, that his ex has ever been in, so he's avoiding the bar that they used to go to together. He's avoiding Victoria's uh -huh. Secret that he, she always hangs out in. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so he's avoiding all the places he used to see her in order to um, uh -huh. not see his ex. Well, the secret's out. <laughs> yeah, so that would be like the free opera because he's not physically yeah. seeing her there. So right. her not being there, there is no SD. Okay. okay. And uh, not going in the crawl space sure. because most likely there's a spider that's free operant i'm just not going in there so i guess a great example would be like a high school breakup for free operant avoidance you know you know he's gonna avoid like you have a lot of problems with he's an avoider and you know i'm not i'm you want to talk about it do we need to call your wife <laughs> no she's in the room we're good we're okay. we're good can we have proof of that no I'm just joking. <laughs> starbucks what about starbucks yeah are we avoiding Starbucks? Not me. The line. Yeah. No. So um, I don't know who said that. Sorry, I didn't see your Adrian. Your... Adrian. No, yeah. No, you you answered my question. Thank yeah. you. So everything we're avoiding because of would be free operant. Me avoiding a football field would be free operant avoidance. Oh yeah, I love this. I love Starbucks too, and Panera. Panera coffee's the best. All right, and that's awesome. pretty much it. This, Marcia. Oh, thank you so much. If anybody yep. has any questions, can always reach I'm out. Kelly. I'll try to help as much as I can. I'm, I'm learning. We all You're are. You're awesome, Marsha. You're and, amazing. Yeah. This is one of the best presentations I've ever been to. Oh, man, and I missed Aww. it. Oh, come on. Awesome. But there's a recording. Oh, you good. Your good, I'll look at it. So yeah, great job, Marsha. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Okay, guys. Take care. I'll be on time next time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bye. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. Right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.